Hello again, Year 5. This is uh, Day 2 of your isolation. Uh, we're still writing the encyclopedia. I've used the same sort of starter as yesterday. Uh, you've got five different pre uh, prefixes on the board. All you need to do is just tell me a few words that link up with that. You can get on with that really, really easy. Uh, I've got no doubt about that at all. Um, all you need to do, write those down. Uh, if you can, it'd be really nice if you could write them down in your book. So I can see that your understanding is perfect when we get back in school after Easter and I'll be able to see how um, how much your knowledge of prefixes and so on has um, improved. So I'll uh, give you a couple of seconds just to pause the video here and then we'll move on. Right, so an encyclopedia, like we said yesterday, is a factual text containing lots of specific information. Uh, some concentrate on a particular subject, such as space or wildlife, whereas others contain a mixture of different information on a variety of subjects. Now, obviously, that means that the Hulk Flow Encyclopedia that we're writing an entry for will contain a lot of information on a variety of different subjects, all surrounding sort of like science and um, DT as well, just to really um, really show off what Hulk Flow close scientific knowledge looks like so here are the features of some of an encyclopedia so you have the main title an introduction you tend to have the subheadings within your section in alphabetical order which is what we've done and obviously the subheadings uh, in the entire encyclopedia will be done in alphabetical order too so it will include technical words uh, which will sometimes be highlights to indicate the reader that this word along with its definition can be found in a glossary now obviously uh, we don't have the time to do a glossary, especially not with you guys at home. So you might see some technical words in our example. And there's also a lot of parentheses in there, just to add extra information, which obviously you guys know about anyway, because uh, we've been looking at parentheses quite a lot recently, haven't we? You might also see a did you know box containing some other factual information. So I'll just move on very quickly. Right, now you don't have this in your packs. Um, this Neil Armstrong encyclopedia entry. But what, I, what I'm expecting you guys to do is pause the video here, read through it, and tell me if you can see any. And just write down, you might write something down like the main title, has it got one? Right, this one is missing one, so you tell me what it should be. Uh, you might see parentheses, if I can see any, let's have a look. Um, there was a lot of this when I looked through it. Right, so your first first part with this is, the only real parentheses we've got is NASA. So, again, I would have asked you to blue pen change this if we were in school, but unfortunately we're a bit stuck with that at the minute, aren't we? So, what I'm expecting you to do this time is go through it all. Tell me, um, tell me how you would change it. And just look through it, maybe make a note of any changes you would like to make. And then this is the proper one. So again, we're looking through for all of these. I've put them just up here so you can see. Uh, you should be able to read that really easy. So this time you can see straight away that I've got subheadings. So in your book, I just expect you to write subheadings. And then put in brackets so you might use training. And then you tell me what subheadings are used for. I've also put relative clauses here. Uh, just because it's something that we've looked at quite a lot and I think you could find really, really easy. Um, if you find any examples of parentheses, um, which you should be able to, uh, you'd find that. Uh, so here, look. So during that flight, Armstrong became the first person to connect his space for craft to the rocket in space. Commas, Armstrong was not, however, the first pure of human in space. So I've added extra information there and used parentheses. So I would use that there to just underline it very quickly. I would underline that. I'll, I'll do it for you. Or I'd write down in your book that there, you've got all of that there as your example of, oh no, that's not going very well, is it? Uh, as your example of parentheses. Uh, relative clauses, you can see this here. In the early 1950s, Armstrong was a pilot in the Korean War, comma, this time as a fighter pilot is what convinced NASA to hire him as, to train as an astronaut. Now, it's quite a long relative clause compared to the one that we've looked at, but you can see that if we just said his time as a fighter pilot is what convinced NASA to hire him and train him as an astronaut, it wouldn't really make sense. Like, 
So I just underlined this here. I probably put in speech marks just so I can see that I know what it is. I'd say that it is a relative clause. It's not gone very well, is it? I'd say that it was a relative clause, and I'd just very quickly explain what a relative clause is. Now, obviously, we know that a relative clause is something that we use to add extra information to our writing, don't we? And it's just very simple like that. I'd just say relative clause, dash, I'd give this example, I'd probably put it in inverted commas just so I know it's a quote from this exact thing. Um, I'd say a relative clause is sufficient, and that'd be very, very simple. If you do need any help, my emails are open all day, as I know Miss Biggs are as well, Miss Biggs as are rather. Uh, so please get in touch if you do need a hand. And I will uh, hopefully see you soon. So goodbye and stay safe.